Code to Enhance Learning presents the CEL video series for creating apps in Thunkable. Through this video series, we aim to introduce you to the world of creating your own apps through platforms like Thunkable. Hello everyone, this is Ayush and I'm excited to see you all today. As you all know, I love coding and I am a regular participant at CEL Hackathon. I will be your host for today. Welcome to the fourth episode of the series Memory Game. In the last episode, we learned how to build an app to guess a number. We all wish to have a good memory, right? What can we do to maintain a good memory? Some of the ways we can maintain good physical and mental health and have a good memory is by exercising, meditating, eating healthy food and getting good sleep. Did you know that some of the games can also help in building memory? Memory games require a player to remember a certain pattern of cards, numbers, letters, scenes, etc. in a short period of time. The player should then recollect these details to win the game. Today, we will make a memory game where the user has to remember the pattern shown on the screen and then recollect the pattern correctly to win the game. Let us look at the demo of the project that we are going to create. I am going to make use of a Reggi project for the demo. Here is a pattern that we need to remember. Hope you are able to remember it. Let me now identify the pattern and click on check. Yay! I am glad I was able to remember the pattern. Let me try putting my memory to test with one more pattern. Uh oh, this was not the correct choice. We can play this game ourselves or with others to sharpen our memory. Let us start by designing the prototype of this app. Before making it in Thunkable, we will create a draft in a notebook. I have used the label component for the title of the project. As the player needs to guess the pattern by clicking on the tiles, I have used the button component to show the pattern generated by the app as well as the pattern guessed by the player. I have also used the button component to check if the user guessed the pattern correctly or not. This brings us to task 1. Pause here and create a prototype of a memory game. You can build on the idea that is shown to you by adding features of your own. After making the draft, I have designed the app like this in Thunkable. Let's look at this in detail. I have added an image on top for visual appeal by uploading a file from my computer. I have also added a label for the title of the project. I have 9 buttons to display the pattern. I have also added the check button. To check whether the pattern I am entered is correct or wrong. Let's take a closer look at the label component. The label allows us to display text in our app. It has various properties like text, font size, color and more. This brings us to task 2. Create the design of the app in Thunkable as per your prototype. We have looked at the demo of the app to understand its working and we have also have the visual design for the app ready. 
Let us now move on to the blocks panel for the coding part. Firstly, we will write code to generate a random pattern by turning the tiles which are part of the pattern into orange color. Whenever we want to compare or match a random generation of patterns, numbers, objects with the guess being done by a player, we can make use of variables. Let me initialize the variables connected to the respective buttons which will store the initial state of the buttons. I will create a variable for button1 called b1 underscore state and then duplicate this for all the other buttons. The code will look like this. Let me also initialize the variables that will be used to store the guess made by the player. Again, I will create a variable for button1 called b1 underscore guess and then duplicate this for all the other buttons. The code will look like this. This brings us to task 3. Create variables to hold the initial state of the buttons and the guesses made by the user. When screen 1 opens, we set the button 1 state to a random integer from 0 to 1. We repeat this for all the other buttons. The code will look like this. Next, we change the color of tiles to create a random pattern. For this, we use the if condition to check whether button 1 state equals 1. If it equals 1, we set the button 1 background color to orange. We repeat this for all the other buttons. The code will look like this. Next, we color all the tiles to be blue in few seconds. We first do this for button 1 and then repeat for all the other buttons. The code will look like this. Let us see if this section of code is working properly. We can observe that the random pattern is generating as expected. This brings us to our task 4. Write codes for the application to do the following things when the screen opens. Show all the elements. Color the tiles to make a random pattern. Color all the tiles to be blue in a few seconds. Now we will write the code to change the color of the button when it is clicked. This will help the user to guess the pattern. When button 1 is clicked, we set the background color of the button to orange.
we also set the button guess variable to 1. We then repeat this code for all the buttons. The code will look like this. Let us test the code we have written so far. We can observe that the random pattern is getting generated and the user is able to press the buttons to recreate the pattern. For the next part of the code, we will make use of operators. There are five types of operators which we commonly use. They are logical operators, assignment operators, comparative operator, string operators, and arithmetic operators. For today's project, we will use logical operators. The common logical operators are AND, OR, and NOT. Let us learn more about the logical operators. The AND operator evaluates the true if the conditions on both sides of the operator are true. Look at the image on the right. Since the image contains the colors black and white, this operation will evaluate to true. The OR operator evaluates to true if any one of the conditions on either side of the operator is true. Look at the image on the right. It contains only the color white and not red. The operation will evaluate to true since one of the conditions is true. The NOT operator gives you the opposite of what the condition evaluates to. Here we know that the color red is not equal to green, so condition evaluates to false, but adding the NOT operator here gives the value to be true. Let us move to the final task. Task 5. Write codes for the application to do the following. Check whether the pattern created by the user is correct on clicking the check button. When the check button is clicked, we will check if the button state and the button guess variables are equal. We will check this for all the buttons using the AND operator. We will also be using multiple IF-ELSE statements. IF-ELSE statements have been added within another IF-ELSE statement. This are called as nested if else statements. If the pattern generated and the guess by the user are the same, we will change the check button's color to green and display the message the pattern guessed is correct on the check button. If the pattern generated and the guess by the user are different, we will change the check button's color to red and display the message the pattern guessed is wrong on the check button.
Let us do a quick demo to test our completed app. Now we guess the pattern we see. Perfect! We guess the correct pattern. Bravo! You can use this app on yourself, your family and friends to improve your memory and train your brain. We hope you enjoyed making this simple game application with us. Here is a short quiz to refresh your understanding. What will happen with the following block? Pause the video and try to answer. The answer option is D. The AND operator will return a true value if both expressions on either side are true. In the next episode, we will be creating another application called the Table Reciter. Till then, stay tuned. This is Ayush signing off. Bye.